Let's talk about some of these power foods now from the other way around. And you mentioned apple cider vinegar. This is one that in the weight loss world has had a lot of steam for a long time. But what I want to do, we can't go through all of them. You've named so many great foods that we want to start including on a regular basis as part of our diet. But let's take a handful of them and talk about the physiology, starting with ACV. How is that helping when it comes specifically to our metabolism and fat burning? Okay. So previously, earlier in the conversation, we went through all the mechanisms of metabolism. So I'll put it in the context of food. Let's just use apple cider vinegar. Actually, it has nothing, very little to do with the apple or the cider, but it has everything to do with vinegar. So um, I have a chemistry background, biochemistry background. So I'll tell you, vinegar is actually made of acetic acid. Acetic acid is what gives vinegar its pungent, potent smell. And it's the same thing. It's an apple cider vinegar. Any kind of fermented fruit will actually do it. Red wine vinegar will do it. Raspberry vinegar will do it. Um, black vinegar, uh, balsamic vinegar will also have acetic acid. And it's the acetic acid in vinegar that's now been discovered in research, both in the lab and in the clinic with humans, that actually burns down harmful body fat. Okay, burns down visceral fat. What does it actually do? It actually slows the ability of your metabolism to load up fat cells as fuel tanks. Remember I told you, you load it up, it gets bigger and fatter and fatter a hundred times. Yep, ACV, but the acetic acid in all vinegars prevents that from blowing up so quickly. So the fat doesn't expand quite as fast. That's just preventing fat from growing. But what about burning it down? It turns on your brown fat. Brown fat actually is like the space heater. And when you actually have the space heater going on, what you're actually doing, and again, I, I, I'm going to show you a little demo. This is that, mentioned. this is your brown fat, and you have apple cider vinegar. It actually turns on the brown fat. It's a special kind of fat. It's paper thin, pressed close to the bone, and it turns it on. Look at that. Look at this flame, okay? That flame has to consume energy. Where does it get the energy from? From your visceral fat. It just steals that energy, and it burns down harmful fat. So apple cider vinegar will actually do this. Now, we know... Um, in the lab, it'll actually cause obese diabetic rats to lose weight. In humans, it'll decrease body fat, um, and it'll decrease waist size, which is your visceral fat, the fat inside the tube that we started talking about at the beginning of this podcast. And so, and you don't, by the way, you don't need to have very much apple cider vinegar. I was very, very surprised to see how modest of amount of vinegar you need to take to have an effect. Even one tablespoon of ACV, and this is from a clinical trial, that you split up into drinking half of it in, in a glass of water or kombucha or something um, and after breakfast and one after dinner, that's enough to start triggering weight loss and fighting body fat. You double that, you go to two tablespoons a day, split it up, put it into a beverage so you don't dissolve your teeth when you're actually swinging it. Um, tomato juice is a great way because now tomatoes also have some extra fat fighting. You'll actually um, improve and increase the amount of weight and body fat you're going to burn down. So again, that's a, a, an example of a food that actually is um, mighty in terms of its effect on your metabolism. And another benefit too of adding ACV and say a glass of water and having that with a meal is it helps curb your blood sugar spike. So if you consume that with a meal with carbohydrates in it, it's been shown to help. It's not going to be perfect. You're still going to get a spike, but it helps you know, make that more gradual. Well, actually, you know, so one of the reasons that does that is by making whatever amount of insulin that you have more efficient. So you don't need to keep spiking your insulin. It'll take whatever's there and just make it work more efficiently. So these things make sense once you look at the research on it. Um, uh, and and uh, so that's an example of something in a middle aisle that you can easily put in your pantry, inexpensive, Easy to have. You don't need very much of it to have a beneficial effect. So to highlight what you just said there with ACV, it affects our metabolism in two ways. One, it affects the fat cell from expanding and getting bigger. And two, it activates the brown fat. So two different ways within that one food or liquid in this case. What I want to do before we part ways, let's talk about a couple of the other foods you mentioned before that act on the system and the physiology in a different way to help burn fat. So let's uh, talk about um, a pear. I actually love pears, you know, especially 
uh, in the fall and winter. I love, there's nothing I love more than a, like a really ripe pear, uh, and, and, and when it's in season. And what does pear, what do pears have? Um, pears have a lot of dietary fiber. Dietary fiber helps your gut microbiome, help feed your gut bacteria. Your healthy gut bacteria helps to streamline your metabolism, helps make your body more sensitive to insulin. So your glucose, your fuels, uh, uh, absorb more f- efficiently, but also it's got chlorogenic acid, which is different than acetic acid. It's a different acid, chlorogenic acid. Chlorogenic acid, by the way, also turns on your brown fat, but chlorogenic acid also takes your white fat, the harmful wiggly jiggly stuff, and says, hey, by the way, taps on your shoulders. Hey, by the way, here's what we'd like you to do. We'd like you to start turning it more into brown fat, healthy fat, helpful fat, useful fat. And literally, you know, your wiggly jiggly stuff goes, so eh, you know what? Okay, I'll do that. And so you can actually use pears, the chlorogenic acid in pears, to help to convert some of your harmful white fat towards brown fat. And in fact, it will also tell your stem cells that might turn, may create another fuel tank. And rather than making more white fat, it might say, hey, buddy, over in that the other direction, don't make more fuel tank for white fat. Go ahead and make some brown fat. It can actually have stem cells make more brown fat. I'm excited to share with you my favorite magnesium supplement, Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizers. Each capsule contains seven different forms of magnesium, and each type plays a critical role in how your body functions. Click the link in the description to save 10% off your order. I know you're going to love Magnesium Breakthrough as much as I do. And now back to the show. All right, one more food before we part ways. And I want to talk about a food you can pick your favorite that acts on the angiogenesis system. So I'm going to come up with a, a, a fairly complicated food, but it's very tasty, and that's pomegranates. All right. Now, pomegranates are, um, they've got seeds with a little rim, a little, little, um, little layer of juice around it. And, um, and pomegranate juice is really pressed from those seeds. Some kinds of pomegranate juice actually is pressed through the skin of the pomegranate, and most of the polyphenols are actually found in the skin. And so how the juice gets pressed can make a big difference. You get a lot more polyphenol with juice that's pressed through the skin. All right. Now, um, pomegranate juice we know contains a natural bioactive called elagitannin. Elagitannins actually do some pretty amazing things. One of the things that it does is it actually um, fights harmful body fat, white fat. It activates brown fat, lowers inflammation in fat. So all these good things that we actually know, it also affects the stem cells of fat as well. These mechanisms are redundant, okay? So that way you can swap and switch and it's not like you got to eat the one thing all the time. Thank goodness that we can actually have diversity. Now, the other thing that happens with the lagitannins is that when we actually um, consume them from pomegranate juice or seeds, it actually, when it gets to our gut, our colon, it it helps our colon secrete mucus. Mucus is very um, normal and healthy. And it helped, and that mucus loves, there's a particular gut bacteria called Acromancia. In fact, it's called Acromancia mucinophila. It's the first name is Acromancia. The last name is mucinophila. That's genus and species. And the mucinophila means that this is the bacteria that loves to grow in, um, in mucus and your gut normally makes it. The more Acromancia you have, Acromancia is a guardian of your met- metabolism. All right. It helps you burn down body fat, helps your metabolism be streamlined. In fact, people who are um, uh, very uh, slim, if you look in their poop and you look at how much acromancia they have, they tend to have a lot of acromancia. You go to somebody who is overweight or markedly obese and you look for acromancia, it's hardly there at all. just shows you the power of just one bacteria in your gut bacteria that can be grown like fertilizer with pomegranate juice. Now, the other thing about pomegranate juice that actually is really important about these elagitannins is that it actually helps to control the blood vessels that might be growing into feed expanding fat. Remember I told you, the more, the bigger the fat you're growing, the more it, it will try to outgrow its blood supply. So the way, one way you can actually tame it so it just can't grow that large is by cutting off those extra blood vessels that's trying to grow. It'll still get a little inflamed. Eventually, it's going to die back. It's like, oh man, we give up. We can't get any bigger. And so, turns out that elagitannins from pomegranate juice are anti-angiogenic, meaning they prevent extra blood vessels from growing to feed body fat as it's trying to expand. And so, here's a way to yoke back expanding fat that's trying to grow out of control. 
by keeping them from growing, getting their own private blood supply. By the way, this is the same approach that's been shown to have an effect, a beneficial effect, in cancers that are trying to grow out of control. You can yoke back the growth of these undesirable tissue by actually preventing blood vessels or preventing angiogenesis, excessive angiogenesis from happening so you can have just the right number of blood vessels, not too few and not too many. It's interesting as you talk about the physiology for some of these different foods that act on the metabolism, it gets me thinking back to earlier, an earlier part of our conversation when we talked about calories, where it's clear as you're saying some of these different mechanisms, you know, activating brown fat or cutting off blood supply to fat, that there's a lot more that goes into how foods interact with our body beyond just calories. So right there, we're, we're proving a point that it's like, you can actually take in a food, which is going to inherently have calories in it, but it can help you fight fat, which is just such a backwards way compared to the current paradigm, which you're helping shatter. Yeah, it's paradoxical. And, and it, you know, and you and we wouldn't have thought this before the research came to light, but it is absolutely true. You can eat food to fight fat. And that doesn't seem to make sense when you think about it without any of this other conversation we've been having. But now that we have the science and you go ahead and you start looking at foods and obesity, there's in the lab and in the clinic, there are definitely foods, a growing list. And I write about 150 of them in my book, Eat to Beat Your Diet, that you can actually find in your grocery store to put on your plate. And if eaten at the right time, in the right way, in the right volumes, all those parentheticals, by the way, are quite important. If you overeat anything, if you overdo anything over time, you're going to take some risks uh, to go along with it. But, you know, I think that there are very sensible ways um, to actually eat for health. And that's what I, what I try to do is I can try to reconnect. I try to send the message that we should be rediscovering our relationship with food. We shouldn't fear our food the way that the messaging has been given to us for so long. You know, food is about fear, guilt, and shame. You're a bad person if you eat this. You're going to get fat. It's so terrible. I think that we should learn to fall in love with our food all over again, connecting with our food in ways that make sense for our individual bodies. There are no hard and fast rules, no black and white things. This is not a light switch. This is a volume switch, and everybody has their own um, temperament and their own preferences, their own tolerability to the volume of that we can actually use these tools. But it's Mother Nature's Pharmacy with an F that she's actually created for us. So we should be really grateful that that exists. And thank goodness there are these delicious recipes from the Mediterranean and Asia, I call it Mediterranean eating, that allows us to dive into these foods in a way that tastes great. So they're good and good for us. The last paradox I want to mention here, I can't help but mention before we part ways, is tying this to the insulin piece as well, where when we're having some of these fat burning foods, they're inherently going to have carbohydrate in them. They're going to spike insulin, which we know, you know, is going to put us into growth mode and, and putting on weight. But the paradox is because of these other mechanisms, it's not as black and white as that. And you can actually have these foods and through other systems that are being talked about today, you can actually have a fat burning effect. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of like, Lots of different things that are happening at the same time. What you want to look at is net net at the end of the day is the outcome of how your body responds to it useful or not. Do you actually gain or lose at the end of the day? It's, it is quite complicated, honestly, but you know, I, I think that if we do things in moderation, uh, and we choose those, we make good choices for those healthy, delicious ingredients that are actually good for us, I, I think we'll be just fine. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. 60 can be the new 20 if you follow your metabolism. And it's the problem of excess body fat that actually shuts down, sits on top of our metabolism. So it's not that a slow metabolism causes us to grow body fat and gain.